My name is Graham Leroy Wright III. I'm from Augusta, Georgia. I'm an assistant cemetery director for the National Cemetery here at Fort Rosecrans and Miramar National Cemetery in San Diego, California. I do many of the same things that the cemetery director does, but my biggest job is to support him in managing the cemetery, helping families out, uh, providing excellent customer service to our families, as well as developing uh, relationships within the community. I'm a retired commander of the United States Navy. I did 25 years, I was prior enlisted. About halfway through my career, I became an officer. I was a department head, administrative officer. I just think all that taken together has just kind of prepared me for my life to, to manage a facility. I want people to come visit, you know, the various headstones that are out here, uh, learn about the people that are here. If it's a family member, they're coming to visit their loved one. I hope that they're, you know, having a good memory of that person when they look at that headstone. I hope that when they see a name and it's not somebody that's associated with their family, they go back and they research that name. Because by researching that name and looking at that person, uh, that veteran never dies. I want them to think about that person's spouse who may be memorialized on the backside of that stone. They gave a lot too. Mr. Uh, Claude Rowe, he was a Tuskegee Airman. He was one of the last Tuskegee Airmen that were ever trained and actually fought at the end of World War II. He originally applied as one of the first classes of Tuskegee Airmen, but he wasn't accepted at that point in time because he wanted to fight in World War II in the war effort, and there's still a lot of segregation in our military at that point in time. He left the United States because he heard that he could fly for the Royal Canadian Air Force. At the end of World War II, he wanted to be a Tuskegee Airman. He was accepted in one of the final classes, and he flew in both World War II, Korea, and Vietnam as a Tuskegee Airman. He was authorized to wear the wings of two separate countries, both the Royal Canadian Air Force as well as the United States Air Force pilot wings. He is one of the few that was authorized to wear the wings of both countries through his service. Edwin Crouch was a captain, a U.S. Navy captain. He wasn't actually a member of the ship's crew, but when the USS Indianapolis had delivered the nuclear bomb, when the ship was on its way back, it got sunk by Japanese forces. They stayed out there for a very long time before they were found, primarily because that whole mission was extremely classified. It was a top secret mission. So nobody really knew that the ship had gone down because it wasn't even supposed to be there. Many of the people were just holding on to life rafts because there's so many of them. And it's not the injuries from the ship going down or coming under attack that did so many of them in. It was sharks. Those people got attacked by sharks. And with the blood that was in the water, it attracted more sharks. When they came under attack, he lost his life out there. He actually was lost at sea, considered lost at sea because of what was going on with the Indianapolis and the fact that so many of them got attacked by sharks. So we have a memorial stone here in honor of him. Uh, his family requested it be placed here at Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery. Uh, that was placed here and his wife, who passed away in the 60s, She's laid to rest here in that same site, so her urn is laid to rest with his memorial marker. As a government agency, we have to be uh, stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. There's a lot that goes into it. It's just not, you know, going out here and, and taking care of a grave site. It's a lot that has to do with that interaction and that management uh, aspect of what we do. For me, the best part of working at NCA is when that family comes in. They're distraught. They're hurting, and my job is to make this part of this process in their life as easy as possible and provide them uh, understanding, empathy, to honor their loved one the very best I can. At the end of the day, when they're leaving here happy and they're satisfied, and they look at the facility and they think it's very beautiful and they're, they're extremely grateful for being here, that's what gets me up in the morning. That's what makes me happy at the end of the day. When I also leave this place at the end of the day and when I leave this place at the end of my career, I wanna be able to look back and say, hey, you know, I had a little hand in making this place a little bit better. That's what's important to me.